Welcome to the required practical activity six. This is investigating the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis in this plant called pondweed. Pondweed is found actually in ponds and um, it lives underneath water. And when it's living underneath water, it does photosynthesize and produce oxygen bubbles that oxygenates the water. So we, we, what we can do is measure the rate of photosynthesis by counting the number of oxygen bubbles when it's in a liquid. So what I have in front of here is all of the equipment we're going to use. So we have a stopwatch, tweezers, a pair of scissors to cut the palm weed, a glass rod, a paper clip to hold the palm weed in the tube that I'm going to show you in a minute, a ruler, the palm weed itself, and some sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is a liquid that contains um, carbon dioxide, which will help the plant photosynthesize. The other parts that we need to look at are um, the tube that we're going to stick the um, palm weed in. We've got the clamp stand and the clamp, and most importantly, the source of light, which in this case is a spotlight, a lamp. I'm going to set up the experiment, okay? So first of all, you need to take your palm weed, okay? You need to ensure that it's around, it's, it is 10 centimetres long. So this is one I prepared earlier, so you can see that that's approximately 10 centimetres. You need to make sure that it's been freshly cut as well with the scissors. So what you need to do is freshly cut it at an angle, okay? So that the oxygen can be released from the palm weed. You then place the palm weed into the boiling tube. Now, before I do that, actually, what you need to do is just put a paper clip on the end very, very carefully, trying not to snap it. So I'll just widen it open. The reason I'm putting the paper clip on is to stop it floating to the surface when I stick it in the tube. So it's a bit fiddly, uh, but you get that on eventually. Okay, and then place it into your boiling tube. And then I'm going to place the sodium hydrogen carbonate to cover the whole palm weed. Okay, right. So if I just move, I'll just move this stuff to the side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the distance of the palm weed from the source of the light. Okay. So what I would do is uh, you want um, probably three or four distances. So I'm going to use the ruler here and I'm just going to measure uh, my first distance, which is going to be 10 centimeters. So if you look on the ruler there, you can see from the end of the light to the, to the palm weed, it's approximately 10 centimeters. I'm just going to move it slightly closer. Now it's really important to say that you don't start uh, timing until the plant has got used to the intensity of light. So what I would do is just get the stopwatch and I would leave it for approximately one minute, okay? If you can see, I don't know whether you can see that, but there, you can actually see oxygen bubbles coming up and those bubbles you can actually count and that will give us the rate of um, photosynthesis. So once it's reached a kind of after a minute or so, you can then time for another minute and count the number of bubbles. Okay, so after that one minute, you then need to record the information onto a table of results. So here I've got a table of results. Um, as you can see, the independent variable here is the distance in centimetres, so 10, 20, 30 and 40. You may want to do the same distances or different distances to get a good range. Um, notice as well in the table that you put the units, you always put the units in the table. And then we've got what we call the dependent variable, in, in other words, the, the factor that we're measuring. And we're measuring the number of bubbles per minute. And you can see that I'm going to measure it three times. The reason I'm going to measure it three times is to make the data more reliable, and then I will be able to work out a mean. So a mean value is basically 
all three values added together divided by the number of values, which is three. Okay? So, for example, at 10 centimetres, I've found 65 bubbles. Okay? So if I've got 65 bubbles and then I repeated it twice more and I got 67 and I got 63. I could then work out the mean value so I would add them together and divide by three um, and then I would find the average and the average in this case is 65 bubbles per minute. Okay, so there's my results. So the next thing to do is to change the distance. So the next distance is 20 centimetres. So I go back here, I use my ruler as before, and I place the light at 20. Okay, so you can see that I'm measuring from the middle of the, the tube to the edge of the light okay and then I leave it for, I time it again leave it for another minute to allow the number to the for the pond weed to get used to the light intensity uh, and then I record my data again so in this case for example I measured it earlier and I found the following results I'll just show you in a minute okay So in this case, you can see that there are less bubbles per minute, okay? So you can see there's 31, a mean of 31 bubbles compared to a mean of 65 at between 10 and 20. So that's showing us a relationship. It's showing us that the further away the light is to the palm weed, the less bubbles are produced. So you could argue that light, the, the higher the light intensity, the greater the rate of photosynthesis. I'd just like to talk about a couple of um, factors here that are important. So for example, uh, what we call control variables. So things that we keep the same. So if you think about this experiment, we've actually kept several things the same. Um, we've kept the length of pond weed. We've kept the same pond weed. We've also used the same concentration of sodium hydrogen carbonates, so we've used 0.2%. So that's a control, so it's always the same percentage of sodium hydrogen carbonate. We're also using the same light, so we're not changing the light intensity with the light, so we're using the same light. So those are called control variables. Now, obviously, there are some errors in this experiment. For example, at the moment, um, as I look around, there is, there's lots of light coming from the window behind me. There's light from up above in the roof. Um, and that will affect the, the measure of light intensity. So to improve this experiment, what you could do is um, basically surround the whole experiment in a black box. So the only light source is from this lamp. Another error though is that actually if I put my hand in front of the um, lamp because it's a filament bulb it's giving off heat which actually you should know that in photosynthesis um, if, it's, if the temperatures are warmer then plants tend to photosynthesize more. So actually what we would need to do is get a, a, a glass barrier possibly to stop the heat um, heating up the sodium hydrogen carbonate. So that's a problem with this experiment. You could also, to improve um, the effectiveness of this experiment, you could maybe look at different types of palm weed. This type of palm weed is called Elodea. Um, there are different types of palm weed and they, their rates of photosynthesis vary. We could also possibly look at the differences in the amounts of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So we could look at different percentage of, percentages of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So for example, at 1% would uh, there be more, pho more photosynthesis.
We could also possibly look at different temperatures as well. So temperatures are the solution. So there's lots of different types of experiments you can do. But overall, as you can see, it's a really effective experiment because you can actually uh, investigate the rate of photosynthesis. That concludes the required practical activity. Please read through the student sheet um, and thank you for listening.